A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. When the western United States were first opened to settlers, the promise of easy wealth brought both honest men and criminals to the new territory. Both found that wealth could only be purchased by hard work, and the criminals returned to their old habits. The masked rider of the plains fought them tirelessly, however. Astride his great horse, Silver, he rode through the length and breadth of seven states in the cause of justice, and in time, he brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Out on the near Carter City! Saddles waiting in the trail ahead! Hail, Silver! Away! Vic Adler, the sheriff at Carter City, his face grim and his fists clenched, nervously paced the floor of his living room. His eyes never left the door leading to his wife's room. Finally, it opened, and John Mackenzie, Carter City's elderly doctor, came out, closing the door softly behind him. Doc. Easy, man, easy. Do you want your wife to hear you carrying on? But I got to know, Doc. I got to... Is she going to get better? She can be cured, Vic. Thank heavens for that. But... But what? Well, Vic, you might just as well know the worst of it now and have it over with. The worst of it? Doc, what do you mean? She'll need special treatment if... There... There ain't no way out of it? It's absolutely necessary. Then she'll have it. When can you start, Doc? Not so fast, Vic. But I want you to... I can't do it. I haven't the training or the equipment. It'll take a doctor in one of the big cities. It will. And that, Vic, will cost money, I'm afraid. Look, Doc, I got close to 300 saved up. Would that be enough? I'm sorry. You mean it wouldn't? Vic, the kind of doctor your wife needs comes high. It would cost you a thousand dollars at least. A thousand dollars? And that's not counting the cost of sending your wife away and keeping her there while she's being cared for. Would would she have to be gone for long? Oh, three, four months, perhaps. And all that would cost close to another thousand. I'm sorry, Vic. If there were anything I could do... Sure, Doc, I know. You could borrow the money. On a sheriff's wages? Hmm. Have you told Mary? She insisted, Vic. Uh Uh-huh. That's the way she is. They don't make him any braver than her. She wanted me to keep it from you. She said there was nothing that could be done and that telling you would only make you unhappy. But I thought you ought to know. Thanks. Well, I'll have to be leaving now. Anyhow, Doc, you've done what you could and... Well, I'd sort of like you to know I appreciate it. You don't have to tell me, Vic. If you need me, just call. Oh, uh, and another thing. Yeah? There'll be no charge for the calls I've made, Vic. That's, uh, well, we'll say that's a gift from one friend to another. Goodbye. Doc, you're one of the finest fellows I've ever known. 
But heaven helping, you will be paid. So long. I guess as bad as things seem, a fellow could be worse off if he didn't have a friend like the doc and a wife like Mary. Is that you, Vic? Can I come in, honey? Of course. Vic, he... he told you. Honey, how did you know? Vic, you'd never have to speak a word. I'd still know what you was thinking. Well, I... I reckon I never was much of a hand for hiding things from you. Oh, then stop your worrying. Everything's going to be all right. Sakes alive. Doc McKenzie's most likely mistaken anyhow. Honey, and... listen to me. Yes? I know you're saying them things just to make me feel good. It's your style. And maybe that's why I've always loved you so much. Oh, Vic. But there's one thing I'm swearing to. If it's going to take $2,000 to make you well, then I'm going to get it for you. I don't know how, but there'll be a way, and by heavens, I'll find it. It was several days later that the Lone Ranger called a greeting to his faithful Indian companion. Tonto had just returned to their small, well-concealed camp after a trip to town. You're back early, Tonto. Oh, Scott. Oh. Oh. You got the supplies we needed? Huh? Me get them. But why did you come back so soon? Me see fella. Me think crook. What's that? And me not sure. So me won't tell you. You mean he's someone we've seen before? That's what Tonto think. What did he look like? Mm, him big fella. Him got beard. Uh. Him wear gun by left hand. Big man with a beard and left handed. Uh. How was he dressed? Um, him wear black coat. Like a gambler's? Not right. I know that sounds like Wolf Corby. I'll have to go into town after all. You wear in disguise? Yes, I'll put on a disguise. And if the man you saw is still there, I'll know at once whether he's Wolf Corby or not. But even as the Lone Ranger spoke... Wolf Corby and one of his lieutenants, a man known as Squint, were reining in their horses before the sheriff's office. Good, 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 good. You sure this is safe, Wolf? Yeah. Ain't I been in town for near a week without being recognized? Don't you worry about anybody in these parts knowing who we are. It'd go bad for us if we was caught. Yeah? <laughs> After I get through talking with the sheriff, that'll be took care of. Come on. Yeah. You let me do the talking. I savvy how to handle his kind, and you don't. Suits me. Come in. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy. Ain't you the stranger I've seen around town for the last few days? That's me. This here's Squint, a part of mine. Pleased to meet you. Howdy. Them two fellows over there sitting with their big feet on my desk are my deputies. The tall one's Mike, and the short one's Sam. How do. How do, stranger. Howdy, father. Sheriff, would you mind if me and Squint was to speak to you alone? Alone? It's something mighty important. You can tell your deputies about it later if you have a mind. Eh? Mm. Get out, you fellas. Just as you say, Sheriff. We'll take a walk down the cafe. See you later. Well. Now then, what's on your mind? <sighs> Sheriff, like you've noticed, I've been around for a few days. Uh-huh. And being a good listener and sort of going from here to there doing all the listening I could, I've heard a few things. Yeah? For instance? Well, like your wife being sick. What's that to you? Now, hold on, Sheriff. You can't blame me for knowing what everybody in town knows, can you? Yeah, I reckon not. And another thing I heard was how the banker turned you down when you asked for a loan. Not only the banker turned you down, but everybody else in town with any cash. Seems to me you've been making my affairs your business. <laughs> uh-huh. Maybe I have. In that case, take my advice and... You're getting mad because we want to do you a favor? Huh? Sheriff, I said a favor, and that's what I meant. Just how much would you like to get your hands on a thousand in cash with another thousand later on? A thousand in cash? Right. You, you mean you're offering me that? You, a stranger? That's what I'm here for. So you're loco. You know what a sheriff makes. What chance would I have of paying you back? That won't be necessary. But in I... In cash. I don't get you. You can pay me back, all right. And you won't need cash to do it, neither. No? Look here. Let's put our cards on the table. Suppose I was to hand you a thousand dollars. 
Then suppose that later on somebody in your county got robbed and was mistaken enough to claim me or my men done it. Oh, that's your game. Then, Sheriff, all you'd have to do is point out how foolish they was to think us crooks. I've been an honest sheriff for 20 years. And you skunks come in here offering me a bribe. That's just it, Sheriff, a bribe. A thousand dollar bribe. You're under arrest. <laughs> you got witnesses to anything I've said? I don't need them. The folks around here take my word for things. Uh-huh. The banker and the rest of them are rewarding you for your 20 years of being an honest sheriff by refusing to let you have the cash you need. The cash you need to save your wife's life. Just think that over. Get out. <laughs> Changing your mind about arresting us, huh? Last to get out before I change my mind again. Sure, we'll go. But remember what I said. A thousand now and a thousand after we've pulled a few raids. Two thousand dollars. Just what you're needing to send your wife away. You! <laughs> Just think it over, Sheriff. Just think it over. Come on, Squint. Let's get going. <laughs> That night, striking with the ferocity of a pack of wolves, Corbin and his men descended upon Mort Powell's ranch house. Get inside, fellas. Shoot down the first arm. Ray raises the hand to stop it. Come on. Lift your hands, brother. This is a holdup. You rotten crooks. If you know what's good for you, keep your mouth shut. Search the place, fellas. Mort's got cash here and we're taking it. Now get moving. Come on. Come on. The following morning, when the sheriff unlocked the door of his office and walked inside, he first noticed a broken window and then a bundle wrapped in paper that lay on the floor just below. Now, what in thunder? The whistle blamed anxious to deliver a package if they had to bust the window to do it. Now, let's just have a look at it. Wrapped up good. Can't figure out what... Well, I'll be... Folding money. And a thousand dollars of it. I'll bet I know who threw this in here. A fellow that come to see me yesterday. Why, the low down... Sheriff! Sheriff, are you in there? If anybody was to see this cash... Watch it, Sheriff. Can't you hear me? Just a second, Mort. Just hold on a minute. The drawer. Mm. I'll have to do for now. I'll find a better place. I can't wait all day. I'm coming. Now, what in blazes do you want? You come along with me, huh? Come on. Maybe he'll be gone before we get back there. Who will be gone? Where are we going? To the cafe. But I don't... Do you recollect my sending one of my men into town last night to tell you about them outlaws raiding my place, don't you? Well, sure I do. Well, I just seen one of them robbing polecats. You did? And he's in the cafe right now. Unless he's got away while I was trying to get you. You mean you recognized him? You bet I did. And you're jailing him. Is he, is he a fella from town? Nope. A stranger. Are you... You better be awful sure you're accusing the right fella. I couldn't be no more sure of my own name. But you know... Here we are. Come on. He was standing at the bar having a drink the last time I seen him. What's it look like? He's tall with a beard. Oh, that fella sitting at the table there, huh? Well, I... That ain't him. There's the one I mean by the bar. Oh, Oh, him. That's him. Now go on and arrest him. I'll give you all the evidence you need. But now, Mort, I... Just I just hear somebody say something about arresting me? You're a thieving crook and you can't lie out of it. Go ahead, Sheriff. Do your duty. Well, I... What are you standing there for? Arrest him. Uh, sure, Mort, sure. The stranger, don't try to get away. I'm the law here and you're going to jail. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue the story. Although the thousand dollars offered to him by Wolf Corby as a bribe was lying in the drawer of his desk, the sheriff was forced to arrest the outlaw when he was identified by Mort Powell. He just standing there grinning at you, Sheriff. Show him you mean business. Didn't you hear me when I said you was under arrest? Now, just wait a minute. I ain't no crook. There's some mistake. And if I could maybe have a word in private with the sheriff here, 
I reckon it could be fixed up all right. What have you got to say to the sheriff alone? Why, I just thought I'd explain to him why it is I can't be the crook you think I am. Unless, of course, he'd rather have some explaining to do. Huh? What did he mean by that, Sheriff? Uh, just wait a second, Morton. I'll see what he's got to say for himself. Well, I'll be hogtied. You're going to listen to the skunk? Mort, you let me handle things my own way. Vic, I've known you for ten years. But in all that time, I've never seen you act like this before. I know my job. Step over here, stranger. If you believe his lies, Sheriff, you ought to have your badge took from you. Now, don't get excited, Mort. Look here, you low You down. ain't arresting me, Sheriff. What's to stop me? You got the thousand I sent you? Sure, you but you... You arrest me and I'll tell about you having that cash. I could explain it some way. It ain't likely. And there's something else maybe you didn't notice. Huh? Every last one of them bills are marked. Jail me and I won't only tell folks you've got that money, but I'll describe them bills so there can't be no mistake where they came from. I'll get rid of them. Yeah? Well, you'll still have to arrest me first before you get the chance to do it. And then it'll be too late. I'll see to that. You. If you ever arrest me, all I'll have to do is tell why you didn't arrest me this time. And this is going to look suspicious enough so those folks will believe my story. I don't know what to do. Then do like I say. Yeah? Tell them what you seen me in town last night about the time his ranch was raided. That'll give me an alibi. And don't worry about me being recognized another time. I just let Mort see me last night so as to force your hand. Oh, the lowest, rottenest thing I ever seen. But you got me where I had to do like you say. <laughs> Thought you'd see sense. Now, if I was you, I'd pretend Mort must have mistook me for that fella sitting over there. He's tall and he's got a beard, too. Come on. Mort, you was wrong. Sheriff, did I hear you right? This couldn't be the fella you met, Mort. What in blazes has he been saying to you? I, uh... He was just reminding me where it was I seen him last night. After he described it to me, I recollected him. And it was the time you said you was robbed, so of course... Sheriff, I you've gone crazy. I'll swear now, he was on. the man that... Mort, that stranger over there looks suspicious to me. Hey, there you. Step over here. You're talking to me, Sheriff? Yes, you. That ain't the man. You was likely so excited last night, Mort. You didn't what know do what... What do you want? I want you to answer some questions, that's what. Yes? What's your business in town? Where was you at last night? What's the handle you go by? I want to know... Those are a lot of questions. What if I don't answer them? Then you go to jail till you do. No, I won't. That's all. You... Slap on the shelf and I'll fire. And don't try to follow me. After him. You'll go after him if you mind, sir, Sheriff. But I'm staying right here. You're just trying to arrest him on a trumped-up charge while the crook here goes to free. I don't know what's got into you, but it's something funny, and maybe I'll find out what. <laughs> I didn't see the man you described, Tonto, until this morning. And it was Wolf Corby, all right. You tell, Sheriff? No, there's something strange there. What's that? I know the sheriff's reputation. Everywhere in the state, he's said to be one of the most honest sheriffs Texas ever had. Mm, that's right. But today, he not only refused to arrest Wolf on the word of a truthful witness, but he tried to arrest me instead. Why him do that? I'm not sure, Kimosabe, but I've got an idea. Uh -huh. When I was in town, I learned a number of things. One of them is that the sheriff has been trying to raise money to care for his wife, who was seriously ill. Mm, that looked bad. But this morning, after the sheriff had tried to arrest me, I pretended to leave town. I circled back and waited for the sheriff to return to his office. And I saw him take paper money from his desk. Where him get money? That's what I don't know. But it could have been a bribe from Wolf. Him not take bribe? Tonto, you have to remember that his wife will die if he doesn't get money. Any man might weaken under those conditions. Uh -huh. But if the sheriff did take a bribe for that reason, I have a plan. What that? First, we'll go back to town, Kimosabe. Uh -huh. And then we'll pick up Wolf's trail. I noticed the direction he rode from town this morning. Then what we do? And then we'll pay a call on Wolf and his gang in their camp. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up, Scott. Come on, Silver. Their work in town finished, the masked man showed Tonto the direction in which Wolf had traveled. And the keen eyes of the fateful Indian followed the outlaw's trail to the gang's hidden camp. We see the masked man and Tonto as they sit astride their horses, hidden from the outlaws by a grove of trees. My mask will probably convince them I'm an outlaw, so I don't expect them to make trouble. Uh. But you stay here, and if anything goes wrong, you'll be able to help. Tonto do that. I'll have to pretend to know more than I do. If my guess was wrong, if they didn't bribe the sheriff, they'll probably suspect me. Uh. But if I was right, then our plan should work. Tonto not think you do wrong. Keep out of sight, Tonto. I'm on my way. Me take care. Come on, Silver. We'll have to do our best, old fellow. Too much depends on us to fail now. 
Yeah, and they've seen us. Hey, what the? A match! Hey, where did you come from? Oh, hey, look here, you. We don't like strangers come busting into our camp. No. So you just turn around again and start traveling. Very well, Wolf. You know my name? I know your name, and I know that you're going to lose the money you paid the sheriff. Just a minute, hold on. Seems to me he knows an awful lot, boy. Hang on to him and make him talk. That's what I came here for. Stranger, just who are that you? That doesn't matter. He's some kind of a crook, boss. Take off that mask he's wearing, and maybe we'll know him. Don't yeah. try it. You want a gunfight or information? What I want to know is how you found out about the cash I gave the sheriff. Did he tell you? He didn't. Then who did? I found out for myself. Just as I found out, you've been tricked. Huh? Tricked? You paid him money for protection. But when you paid him, there was something you didn't know. What's that? You probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. Why, it's under you talk or we'll make you. I'll do this, Wolf. I won't tell you myself. As I said, you wouldn't take my word for it alone. But I'll send you to a man whose word you'll believe. Yeah? You know John McKenzie, the doctor in Carter City? I know him. What about it? Then go to Dr. McKenzie and ask him just one question. What question's that? Ask him how long he expects the sheriff to live. Huh? Say, do you mean... You'll find out what I mean when he tells you. That thousand. If something's going to happen to him, if he won't be able to give us protection after taking our cash... And if I were you, Wolf, I'd see McKenzie as soon as I could. I'll do that same. Hey... Well, what are you telling me this for? It might be that I want to join your gang. Yeah? So that's it, huh? You can draw your own conclusions. Strangers, we're going to look into what you said. Good. All of you, get to your horses. We're right. And stranger. Yes? If you've told us the truth, you can join us any time. What's more, we'll make it worth your while. You coming with us? Steady there. No, Wolf. But I give you my word, you'll see me later. That suits me fine. Everybody ready? Yeah. Then come on. Get over there. Get over there. Hurry it up, Doc. Is someone ill? I... That gun. Doc, take a good look at that shooting iron and start talking. Talking? There's something I want to know to gone bad and you can tell me. Yes? For one thing, is there something wrong with the sheriff? But you're asking me to tell a professional secret. Tell or get drilled. Well, I... I've seen men in better health. Don't try to fool me. Talk out and talk straight. Is there anything wrong with him and he'll maybe die from? I... Quick! I shouldn't say. I'm giving you one more chance. If you don't take it, well, then maybe you won't never talk again. Now, let's have it. It, It's possible that he might die within a week. Within a week? It's very possible. That's all I wanted to know. But wait. Get back inside, Doc, and keep your mouth shut. Was the man fella telling the truth, boss? Yep, he was. The sheriff's got the cash. What are we going to do? Take it back and make him wish he'd never met up with Wolf Colby. Right now, we're heading for the sheriff's house. Get up there. Sure, sure. Stand where you are, Sheriff. You again. What Shut you up. Want? Squint, Blackie. Keep the Sheriff covered. Right. You'll wake my wife. That's just too bad. Not too Shut bad. up and listen to me. You know where we've just been? Huh? To see the duck, that's what. And he told us the truth about you. You, you blasted cheat. Taking the cash I gave you. And all the time knowing you wasn't going to live long enough to do us any good. Hey, you're local. You figured we wouldn't find it out, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. I suppose you're going to stand there and claim there ain't nothing wrong with you. That you ain't liable to die before long. Will you? Uh, I ain't got time to argue with you. Where's the cash? You, you want it back? I want it and I'm getting it. Uh, I'll get it for you. No, you won't. Just stay where you are. You tell us and we'll get it. I ain't taking chances on no more of your tricks. That desk. It's there? Which drawer? The bottom one. In the cash box. Look for it, Squint. If it's there, I'll find it. But, but there's more than what belongs to you there. You ain't going to take the cash as mine, are you? I ain't particular. Here's the cash box, boss. Bring it here. It weighs pretty heavy, Wolf. There's more than just folding money in it. You got the key, Sheriff? And I'll open it. Give it to him, Squint. Uh-huh. Wait till I find my keys. Oh, here they are. This is the one. There. <laughs> now I'll take it. Here's the thousand, all right. <laughs> Gold and silver, too, eh? Well, that's just fine. I reckon I'll just take the whole thing along. My life's saving. Nice of you, Sheriff, to save it for me. Not for you, Wolf. Fight, man. That's the game. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And the Sheriff's deputy. You're coming. And you rotten crooks had the nerve to rob the Sheriff. Wait, hold on. You can't arrest us. We can't? Well, you're already arrested. Sheriff, look here. This thousand you took. What about the thousand, Wolf? The Sheriff took it. It was a bribe. What kind of a yarn is that? You pull cash out of your pocket and try to claim it's a sheriff's. Now, I suppose you'll say what's in that cash box ain't the sheriff's. The masked fella. It was him that done this. 
saying he wanted to join us. I said I might want to. It was a trick. The sawbones lied to He us. didn't lie either. He said it was possible the sheriff wouldn't live. The same thing could be said of any one of us. You hear that, Wolf? The mad fellow knew what the doc said. I'll bet a minute he put Doc up to it. That's look. enough out of you fellas. You're heading for jail, a whole lot of you. And Sheriff. Yeah? When the masked man came and got us, he told about Wolf being wanted in Montana. There's blame near $3,000 in reward money on the heads of him and his gang. There is. Then where's the mask gone to? Get a hold of him. Tell him reward's his. That ain't he... the way he wanted it, Sheriff. Huh? It was his rightly, so he could do with it what he pleased. And he said it was to go to you so your wife could get the kind of doctrine she needs. He said that? Oh. Sam, there ain't a fellow I know of that'd do a thing like that, except one. And that's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>